In this tutorial for new Blender users, we'll take a look at the wave modifier and we'll apply it to this scene from the previous lesson. So I still have my lighting set up in here, how I like to work, and if I was to render it, it gives me this nice little scene like this. But let's maybe have, maybe there's a little earthquake somewhere and it's going to make the ground shake or something like that. Well, so there's always techniques you can use. You could try and shake your camera, but for, we'll try maybe make the ground vibrate like this. And we'll use the wave modifier for it. And I'll show you this versus other effects you might be able to take advantage of. So if we go into here um, with the plane selected, I'm going to add the modifier wave like this. And it moves it way up in the scene like this, out of the way. Well, that's because my timeline is set here at 150. So if I move it back down, you see what it's doing. It's basically following the timeline and it's bouncing the wave up and down like this. So let's just go back to zero here and set it down in the scene. And it didn't look like much of a wave for starters. All right. Well, one of the things you need to take advantage of first is you have to make sure you have enough uh, faces in your mesh. So in, with this selected, I'm going to press tab and go into edit mode. And there's only one face <laughs> right there you can see in the scene. So I'm going to press W and I'm going to come up here and press subdivide. Suddenly there's four faces. I'll subdivide it again. Now there's 16. I'll keep subdividing it. I'll make, you know, that way it gives it a lot of data to work. That's quite a few subdivisions there. We're already up to 16,384 like that. So then I'll leave edit mode and it's still way up there out of the scene like that. But you can see now when I'm moving it here that it has this curve effect that's being applied to it. All right. So now there's another thing. First of all, this height, let's just drag this height way down. So back to where I can see the scene like this. So it's not going anywhere. So it's just, just barely. All right. Now let's press Alt A and see what it's doing. All right, so there it's starting to go. And let's just change this narrow tab a little bit like this. So it's kind of, and now we kind of get a bouncing effect or whatever. It, it's You can generate all kinds of interesting effects with it like this. But maybe this is an object that's in the world there, you know, and well, it should be moving with the surface if this was an earthquake or something or the water. So. We'll escape and we'll press this and we'll shift and click there and I'll try and parent that sphere. Oh, do we get it here? That one, shift that, try to parent it to the object. So that's parented to the object like this. So then when this moves, theoretically this should move. So let's find out. And no, it doesn't. All right. So that's interesting. You would think it might, but it doesn't. So let's try. Nope. So really, this is one way to generate waves, but I found that from working, a better way to do it is to use uh, cloth or soft bodies and and use a wind uh, physics effector up in here like this. Use a force field with wind. And I would recommend instead of trying this approach, this is good for certain things, but I found it to be much more flexible if you use the other approaches. And if you go into my channel my YouTube channel and there's a bunch of playlists indicated and if you go down to the one called easy wind waves I don't know something like that easy wind waves something and it's about making a boat float on the water and it and it gives you much more dynamic effects about making this move along with objects in the scene with a little more control than with the wave modifier but it's something to work with every every little bit helps for one of the reason but just wanted to point that out and that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.